Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I am your host, J Just J, your resident troublemaker and your resident culture warrior. I hope you are all doing awesome, you beautiful badasses. I know it's been a freaking hot minute. It's been like what, four days since the last time I put out a video? That's like the longest I've ever gone without doing a video since I started, I think. Um so it feels like forever. Um but I've still been, you know, communicating through the 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 um comment section and uh, posting some stuff over in the community section so if you haven't already go check that out as well um but i just wanted to touch on this came across uh the old computer screen today and i thought you guys might get a kick out of it considering one of the most recent videos i did we were talking about this exact show and it is this is coming to us from our good uh folks over at bounding into comics and it says, The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim producer, trashes Amazon's Rings of Power series. Hmm. Senior Vice President of Action and Anime at Warner Brothers Discovery and producer of the upcoming The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim, Jason DeMarco, trashed Prime Video's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. In two now-deleted tweets captured by YouTuber NBR, DeMarco responded to an IGN article claiming to have all the answers about who is Sauron and who is the Stranger following the Rings of Power's Season 1 finale. DeMarco initially responded to the tweet writing, quote, Don't expect answers that make any sense or derive from Tolkien, unquote. He then followed that up writing, quote, why make a show that's first and foremost going to appeal to Tolkien fans only to shit all over the world, characters and story that made us all fall in love with Middle Earth to begin with? I sure couldn't tell you, unquote. And there you can see the actual quotes. Um... As noted by NBR, DeMarco would explain why he deleted the, t the two tweets, writing, quote, eh, deleted the thread, it's drawing flies. Like all negativity, it just draws more negativity, a lesson I must continue to learn daily, unquote. He then elaborated in a follow-up tweet, writing, quote, by flies, I mean people that jump in my replies to be rude because they disagree with an opinion. I don't mean anyone who feels differently than I do. I'm not telling anyone what to enjoy or casting aspersions on those who like something I don't, unquote. And again, there you could see his tweets. Interestingly, DeMarco's opinion clearly changed as he watched Prime Video's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. When the show initially debuted, DeMarco wrote on Twitter, quote, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, pretty good. It looks and sounds great. The money is definitely on screen. The score sounds terrific. Right out of the gate, it gets close enough to the Jackson films and their feel of Tolkien that felt so right, unquote. However, he went on to hedge, quote, but despite this, he, despite this, he murderers, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to assume he meant despite this the murderer's row of great tv writers and directors they they've assembled and the uniformly solid cast it's still not great none of the original characters stand out much so far and the dialogue is trying for tolkien and mostly not quite getting there unquote okay i'd agree with that demarco continued Quote, I'm always going to be annoyed at the way they are jacking around the timeline. Thousands of years of events are being compressed into such a short time frame, and the Harfoots are a total dud so far. So are fake Berenice, Berenice and Luthien. Um, he concluded his thread. So it's not knocking it out of the park, but it ain't bad either. We'll see where it goes. They got arguably the most important part right. It feels Tolkien-esque. Time will tell if it is able to stand on its own, unquote. Well, we, we know how that played out, right? While DeMarco criticizing the Rings of Power is a good sign when it comes to the potential for the War of the Rohirrim, there is also a massive red flag. Back in October, he shared an excerpt from the Silmarillion and claims that it gives, quote, insight into Tolkien's thoughts regarding gender, unquote. It's an obvious push to claim that Tolkien would support the current and evil transgender ideology that has infected Hollywood and political elites in the United States. Okay, clearly 
we're getting into the author of the article's opinion here, so take it for what it is, okay? It's not not me, okay? It's it's the author of the article's opinion. To make this clear, he points to one line, quote, even as with us, male and female may be shown by the raiment, but is not made thereby. He would also like a response with a meme showing that Tolkien would say trans rights. Um, and there you see, and that's the quote from the Silmarillion. Um, okay. So then he says, however, he doesn't even include the full sentence and is taking it out of context despite sharing the full context in the previous tweet. Tolkien writes, quote, but when they desire to clothe themselves, the Valar take upon them form take upon them forms, some as of male and some as of female, for that difference of temper they had even from the beginning, and it is but bodied forth in the choice of each, not made by the choice, even as with us male and female may be shown by the raiment, but is made thereby. Clearly, Tolkien is noting that the Valar were either male or female from the very beginning, but they can choose to appear as a man or a woman, not actually become the opposite of how they were made. A man can indeed dress like a woman, and a woman can dress like a man, but just because you are, a, are dressing as a man or a woman, it does not make you so. A man cannot become a woman, and a woman cannot become a man. It is simply impossible, and those claiming that it is possible are lying to themselves and rejecting the truth and reality. The War of the Rohirrim is an anime-style film being directed by Japanese director Kenji Kamiyama and written by Jeffrey Addis and Will Matthews. The film is expected to follow the story of Helm Hammerhand and will feature narration by Miranda Otto as she reprises her role as Eowyn from Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy. The hope for the film is that it will accurately adapt Tolkien's short story about Helm Hammerhand found in Appendix A of The Lord of the Rings. The short story sees Hammerhand defend his kingdom from a rival lord, Wolf, who leads the Dunlin Dun <coughs> excuse me, Dunlindings and other enemies of Gondor, as well as three fleets of course hares during the long winter that covers Rohan and Snow for five months. Um, what do you make of DeMarco's comments regarding the Rings of Power and Tolkien? All right. Um, I guess that is the $64,000 question. Well, first of all, um, I agree with his comments regarding the Rings of Power. Um, I, uh, and, I, you know, we, we've, we've discussed it here on, on the channel, but I'll, I'll repeat. I was one of those people that was hopeful, right? I, I wanted it to be good. Um, I was crossing my fingers and praying that it would be good. And then it came out and I realized that, you know, Eru had ignored my prayers, um, because it was crap. It was a complete shit show in every conceivable possible way. And you guys know this. I've said it a million times. I'm, I don't pull my punches. It is just a shitty show. The writing is horrible. The acting is is subpar at best. The cinematography is eh, okay. The the effects, the visual effects are in some instances they're really really good and in some instances they just look like garbage. Um for instance, the warg in Rings of Power show compared to the wargs that you saw in Peter Jackson's films 20 years earlier, okay? You tell me which ones look better, right? Um, but then there were other scenes, you know, that where CG was employed and it, and it worked. Okay. So, I mean, but other than, than that, um, and possibly the soundtrack, like you could, you can give props to, uh, the sound for the soundtrack. And that's probably the only thing that I wouldn't, um, sort of come at you with a big caveat about, um, cause the soundtrack is generally good. Now, is it as good as Howard Shore's stuff from Peter Jackson's trilogy? No. Um, but is it passable? Is it, does it have the right feel, you know, and, and is it decent? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not going to trash it. it. It's okay. Um, but other than that, it's a complete freaking disaster. Okay. And, and you guys know this from the lore, again, lore, acting, cinematography, um, the, the dialogue, you know, this, the special effects. And when I say special effects, I mean, practical special effects, um, practical special effects, you know, are all subpar at best, or just to put it bluntly, freaking shitty, right? Um, 
And the CG stuff, like I said, is either hit or miss. It depends on which particular scene you're talking about. Some of it I thought looked really, really good, and some of it I thought looked really, really crappy. That's just my take, right? So so I agree with, with uh, DeMarco's take on that um, and, and, and calling it out for what it is. You know, and he's not going to get called racist, though, um, you know, or a hater or a misogynist or some form of a bigot, um, you know, because he's in Hollywood and he this is what he, he travels in the, the, the right circles and stuff like that. Me, on the other hand, you know, I'll be all those things because somebody has to be and I don't give a crap what people think. Um, now, in terms of the other stuff. um. All right, let me just say 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 this and get it out of the way for anybody who may be wondering. Um, I don't care what you, how you choose to identify. I don't care how you choose to live your life. As long as you're not hurting anyone else or infringing on anyone else's rights, um, you live the best life you can live. You know, I have a very simple rule. My rule for dealing with people of different races, ethnicities, religions, political uh, ideologies, um, you know, gender identities and stuff. My rule is very, very simple. And that is simply don't be an asshole. Right. It, it, it's a simple rule. Right. I treat everybody I come across how I want to be treated. It, it's literally that simple. Now, um, I do believe that that particular quote um, gets taken out of context. And I remember when I was reading the Silmarillion and, and I saw that, I knew right away that that would be taken out of context by somebody sooner or later, right? Because on the face of it, that's it's sort of like what he's saying, you know, it's like the Valar can sort of take the form of a man or a woman, or I should say a male elf or a female elf. Um, but again, Tolkien does qualify this by saying, you know, they're not just male or female because they choose to be male or female. They sort of were of that disposition already, right? Um, he, he very much lays that out. And, and I like, I do give props that the actual, that paragraph was in there. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking at it right now and I'll sort of read it in case anybody is not familiar with it. Um, this is from the Silmarillion, and he says, Therefore the Valar may walk, if they will, unclad, and then even the Eldar cannot clearly perceive them, though they may be present. But when they desire to clothe themselves, the Valar take upon them forms some as of male and some as of female. For that difference of temper they had even from their beginning, and it is, it is but bodied forth in the choice of each, not made by the choice, even as with us, male and female may be shown by the raiment, but is not made thereby, right? That's, those are Tolkien's words. So you have to interpret that, that the only correct way to interpret that is Tolkien is saying that, yes, the Valar, let's say Manwe and Yavanna, right? Um... They appear as male and female because they've chosen to appear as male and female, but that choice was based on their own spiritual, celestial disposition, right? So Man, Manwe would be more, let's say, masculine right? Um, whereas Yavanna would be more feminine. And it was those aspects that informed and may help them make the choice to appear as either male or female, right? So I don't think you can interpret that as like, oh, Tolkien was pro- transgender as we understand it in 2022. I honestly don't think Tolkien viewed it that way, especially as a, a devout Catholic. I, I, I think that was, you know, um, not in, al in alignment with, with his beliefs and his outlook, right? Now, that's not to disparage people in 2022 choosing to live their lives however they see fit and identify how, however they see fit. Um, and like I said, my rule is simple. Sim don't be an asshole. Treat the people around you the way you want to be treated and you get through life pretty good. Right. And that's always been my philosophy. Um, so I'm not going to say that any 
movement is wholly evil or something. There are some things within every community, including the trans community, that I'm not on board with. Um, a perfect example is, um, don't come at me about using your pronouns. I don't care about your pronouns. Pronouns are how a person describes somebody else when that other person is not in the room. So like if I'm talking to somebody else about my brother and I say, yeah, he was telling me and he said, yeah, right, that, that, that's how you're prone. You, you, when you're face to face interacting with somebody, you don't use terms like he or she or any other type of pronouns. You generally will say things like you, right? Like, hey, Charlie, you're, you're looking pretty sick or how's things with you, right? Pronouns are used when you're talking about somebody to somebody else. OK, and my only issue is um, nobody's going to dictate to me what words I can or cannot use when they're not even around. You, you understand what I'm saying? Um, you know, I will treat you with the mo utmost respect. And if we go out to dinner and you, I, you know, you were born a biological male, but now you identify as a woman, you know, hey, tell me about your date last night, girl. You know, like, I, I honestly don't care. It's not, you know, how, how you live your life is fine. I'm going to be cool with it. As long as we're cool with each other, I don't care. But you don't get to dictate how I talk to other people, okay? Especially when you're not even there. And that I have a problem with, right? And But that doesn't mean that the, the, the transgender movement is inherently evil, as the the author of, of the article stated, okay? Um... I, I don't believe it's inherently evil. I do believe that there are activists within every every movement that tend to push things too far. And I you can point to any movement, whether they be, quote unquote, politically right or left. I believe that there's always going to be certain people that will see it as an opportunity to try and push the boundaries as much as they can, which tends to sort of cause problems for the other people that are just trying to get through and live their best life. But that's just me. I don't want to get into it because this isn't a political channel. It's a Tolkien channel. But anyway, I thought it was kind of cool that, uh, you know, the, the the producer of War of the Rohirrim was taking pot shots at Rings of Power um, because I would. I think he's right. I say, yeah. Listen, you know, you can polish a turd all you want. It's still a turd. And let's face it, Rings of Power is nothing but a turd. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Um about what the uh, producer of War of the Rahiram had to say about the Rings of Power. You know, and if you want to get into the, you know, if you want to have the conversation in the comment section regarding um, the issue with transgender that was also brought up, um, I would say, obviously, you know, you know I've always had a, a rule here is like, listen, um, constructive, you know, criticism is always welcome. OK, but like hateful attacks and and using slurs and just being, you know, a nasty asshole will not be tolerated. I will, you know, swoop right in like, you know, guy here and and, you know, I, I will delete a post or I'll block a person. You know, like I said, everybody's welcome to have an opinion and discuss it on my channel. Um as long as it's done respectfully, I don't, you know, I have no issue with people having different views on things as long as it's the conversation is kept on a respectful level. Um, I would be more interested, though, about the Tolkien quote in relation to that. I would like to see if other people also take that quote the way I interpreted that quote. Um, or do you interpret it differently? And again, I'm not saying one way is more right or the other. I'm just saying that's how I interpret it. Somebody else may interpret it a little bit differently. I'd be interested to hear your opinion about it. All right, and I think that's going to cover this episode. I've been going on for 19 and a half minutes now, so it's already getting too long. But anyway, I just wanted to, to come back in and drop another video. And remember that we're doing our first live stream Saturday at 6 p.m., okay? That's Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern stay, Daylight Time, Eastern Standard Time. Um, we'll be... Uh, our first live stream. It's going to be interesting. You have to bear with me. It's gonna, I'm sure there's going to be some mess ups, but you know, we're going to be watching uh, the doom of the Noldor. 
um, which was a video highly recommended from our own Macaroo 112. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do a live stream and kick back and watch that. Um, I think it's like 10 minutes or something like that. And we'll, we'll watch that, and then uh, I'll, I'll react to it, and I'll, we can, you know, have the chat going. Maybe people want to discuss it. We'll see how it goes. Again, first live stream. We'll figure it out. Okay, if we screw something up, we'll screw something up. We'll do better the next time. All right, guys, until then, I will talk to you soon. Remember, be good, be safe, be awesome. Peace.